This video was sponsored by Hone Health. Hold it, hold it, that's a terrible place to start a video. Let's back up a little bit and explain how we got into this predicament to begin with. White snow, red sky, now, believe it or not, this is my hundredth video. That's right, 100 videos on YouTube. And because it's my 100th video, I decided I wanted to do something different. Something I'd never done before. Now you've probably heard me say multiple times how I hate river tables. I think they're stupid, and I think they're ugly. But you know, I started thinking about it and realized that I'm saying all this without anything to base that on. I've never actually built a river table. So I decided before I continue to trash them, I would take the time, put in the effort, and build a river table for myself, start to finish. So this is what I did. I went down to my local lumber shop, the Hardwood Center, and I picked out a nice, solid maple slab. Now, I've seen in other people's videos that in order to make a river table, you have to cut that slab down the middle and separate it into two pieces. So, I did that. Then I flipped each piece over so that the live edge faced one another. This creates the so-called river part of the river table. I don't know, looks suspect to me. Then because we're abandoning all normal woodworking practices and are going to be pouring gallons of plastic over this beautiful wood, next I needed to make a form that I could set those two pieces of slab inside so that that liquid plastic wouldn't leak all over the place. So I got some melamine and I cut it down so that I could fit those two pieces of slab inside my melamine form. But what good is a form without sides? Because you know, the plastic gooey stuff, it's gonna run out if you don't have sides on there. So I cut down some side pieces and I just slapped them on either end and held them in place with a bunch of wood screws because I guess that's what you do when you build a river table. You wood screw a bunch of melamine together. Yeah, okay, this is really, really cool. I definitely see why people are so into this. Once I got all my sides screwed on and I had a melamine form, I took out my slabs and next I sealed all of my seams with some clear silicon caulk. Because, you know, in woodworking, you gotta worry about your wood leaking out of the little cracks and crevices. No, you don't, because wood isn't liquid, like gooey plastic. But hey, I'm keeping an open mind here. After sealing up all my seams so that our epoxy wouldn't leak out of the form, I reinserted my two slab pieces back into their correct position. Now, one thing you gotta know about wood is that it floats. You know, that's why they make boats out of it. It's very buoyant, so you have to hook the wood to your form or else when you pour the epoxy in, it's going to want to float up to the top. I simply did this by just sending a few screws through the bottom of my form right into my slab. I just wasn't going to spend a lot of time figuring that one out. And next, to make sure that I had a pretty, beautiful river, I took a wire brush and I got rid of all the bark and dust on that live edge. This way the epoxy will stick really well to that beautiful, beautiful maple. Another thing about wood is that it's very, very porous, which means if you just pour a bunch of epoxy over it, it's gonna be releasing air bubbles through all those little pores over and over and over again, and you're not gonna get a clear pour of epoxy. So I tasked Craig with mixing up some high performance total boat and sealing that live edge. This hopefully will eliminate all those little bubbles trying to escape when we do our final pour. Then before we do our final, final pour, I decided to do a base pour with the high performance just at about a quarter of an inch thick. This will give us a nice base 
and allow us to add something special to this table. But I'll tell you about that here in a second. For now, I am attempting to do my first ever river table epoxy pour. Gosh, this stuff is goopy and wonderful. Definitely realizing why people think this is so satisfying. There's nothing quite as satisfying as rubbing a giant booger over some beautiful maple slabs. I get it. I really, really get it. With our base layer of high performance total boat epoxy poured, I grabbed a blowtorch and I just started waving it around. Apparently this convinces the epoxy to release those air bubbles that are trapped in there and make it nice and clear. Then I added a, another bead of clear silicon caulking to each side of my live edge. This just kind of creates a dam to keep all that wonderful plastic epoxy from running all over the top of your table. All right guys, we're just about ready to pour this thing. Now, because this is our 100th video and we wanted to do something special and significant, we thought it would be a good idea to take our top 100 most hater comments of all time on YouTube and float them in the middle of this epoxy pour. And I'm talking mean comments. For example, Josh182 says, you look just like my aunt Cindy. Richard Brace says, your grandma was the best part of that video. That hurts. Tiger Deer says, so cocky. Easy for who? A pro carpenter with lots of high-end tools? Sure, you're really good and make awesome things, but don't be so arrogant. MK, are your thumbs differently shaped? Yeah, they are, and it's a sensitive subject. If you got $10,000 to $15,000 in specialty tools, you too can make this project. This video is informative in sight of the stupid jokes and the host's off-putting idiocy. That one cuts deep. I feel like anyone who has a shop capable of building that bench already knows how to build that bench. You're a waste of time. All right, let's float these things and really make this table special. A hundred videos is no small feat. And so I just wanted to take a minute to thank all of you loyal subscribers and viewers out there for helping us get here. And as a special thank you, these comments will be embedded in this table forever. I also decided to add this sticker. Not because I'm solely against river tables, but because I'm trying to put an end to my preconceived notion and really open my mind to the idea that river tables might not be all that bad. For our final pour, we're using Total Boat Thick Set Fathom. Apparently this allows you to pour up to two inches thick without it overheating and burning down your shop. Let's hope the label's right about that. Now it was time to pour. And I gotta tell you, I struggled with this one. I told myself I would never in my life make a river table. And here I am with a giant bucket full of goop, about ready to pour it all over these beautiful hard maple slabs. I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if when it finally came time to tilt that bucket, I could actually make myself commit. But I'm not a quitter. And when I say I'm gonna do something, by golly, I do it. So I tilted that bucket, and I poured that liquid snot all over that beautiful maple. And I felt bad about it. But I'm giving this a try, I'm keeping an open mind, and I apologized thoroughly to that maple once I was done. I dumped every last drop of that thick-set fathom epoxy in between those maple slabs all the while wondering to myself if I did a bad thing. Was I making a beautiful table, or was I making a deal with the devil himself? Hey people, this video is proudly sponsored by Hone Health. Now, if you're like me, you probably start getting a little bit older, start having kids, and maybe your energy level, well, it doesn't seem to be what it used to be. And this could be caused by something called low T. Hone is here to help you figure out if that's an issue for you. 
Everyone wants to think that testosterone just has to do with sex. Sex this, sex that, but it's so much more. Your testosterone can affect your mood, it can affect your focus, muscle mass, energy. So it's important to figure out if you're suffering from low T. And Hone has made it super simple to do just that. They send you this really cool at-home assessment test. You've got your instructions in here, it tells you exactly what you need to do. Basically, there's this little card and there's these little finger pricks. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt that bad. You prick your finger, you put a few dots of blood, you stick it in this prepaid mailing envelope, you send it back, and then Hone will take it from there. They'll contact you, they'll set up a time to do a video call, they'll walk you through if you have low T and if you do exactly what you need to do about it. Listen, I'm not a medical expert, but the people at Hone are. And for a limited time, Hone is offering my viewers a special offer for $45. You get the at-home assessment and a doctor's consultation. 45 bucks, that's it. They'll send you the at-home assessment, they'll get you hooked up with a doctor, and you can find out if you have low T. All you gotta do is click the link in the video description or go to honehealth.com slash bourbonmoth. Just figure out if this is something you gotta worry about. It'll make you feel better, put your mind at ease, do it now. After letting the epoxy sit for a few days, the craziest thing happened. It went from liquid to this hard, plastic-like mass. And it was clear. What is this stuff? I'd never seen such a thing in my entire life. But I have to admit, it was honestly pretty cool looking. I mean, you could see all the comments in there. You could see that sticker I put in there. It was hard, kind of like wood even though it wasn't wood. I don't know. Part of me was starting to feel like maybe these things weren't that bad. And it was a whole heck of a lot of fun breaking the form off and exposing the table. One solid mass. What started out as two pieces of wood is now magically one. So with Craig's help, we lowered the table to the floor and we attempted to release the bottom form from the rest of the table. I had no clue if this was going to work. I heard that epoxy didn't stick to melamine, but I had never tested that theory for myself. Thankfully, the bottom piece popped right off without any issue at all, exposing our now cured river table. Gosh, I never thought I'd utter those words, but here I am. And I'm man enough to admit when I could possibly be wrong. This thing doesn't look as bad as I anticipated. Dare I say it looks kind of cool. So I started scraping off all that silicone caulking and got ready to sand this thing down. That is the one downside of this. All the sanding. And I sanded for hours. All by myself. Without any help from anyone. Just me alone with the sander. And it took a while. Once I had the entire thing thoroughly sanded, I cut it to its final length with the track saw. What is all this stuff? Coconut? I decided because I'm already using a ton of epoxy in this project, I might as well go all the way. So for finishing this table, I decided to use just a bar top epoxy coat. This also worked out really well because it meant I didn't have to sand and sand and sand to get that epoxy super clear because the bar top is going to cover up any of the sanding swirls left behind. They'll just all get filled in and meshed together, and this whole thing should clear back up very nicely. Just like this. With each pass of my squeegee, spreading that epoxy around, exposing that beautiful wood and making that river run clear, something strange began to happen in my heart. I started to finally, for the first time in my life, see the beauty within a river table. Something I never thought I would be able to see was coming to life right before my eyes. Could I change my ways? Could I actually love something that I previously thought was so hideously ugly? I'm not gonna lie. In that moment, I decided that I like river tables. I actually think they're beautiful. I get it now. I understand the draw. They're glorious. Jason, it's Moses. Like the real Moses? No, Jonathan, can't, why are the lights off in here? And why is it so smoky? I was just 
trying to set the mood, I turned the lights off and put on a fragrant candle. I thought it was nice. What are you doing here, man? Jason, you're better than this. Better than what? Than this. This is terrible. It's ugly. Yeah, you're right. It is pretty ugly, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? It's stupid. <sighs> what should we do with it? Let's blow it up. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in life you lose your way. Thank God for good friends to set you straight. Lucky for me, Jonathan Katz Moses showed up just in the nick of time and showed me just how ugly these things are. Why in the world anybody would pour gallons of liquid plastic over beautiful wood is beside me. So I got on rockler.com and I bought some awesome hairpin legs and we attached them to the bottom. If we're gonna blow this thing up, it at least needed to be a finished table. And based on extensive scrolling on Instagram, I knew that hairpin legs were the desired legs for pretty much every river table I've ever seen. With our legs installed, we flipped the whole thing over and looked pretty good. With my river table complete, we loaded it up in the back of my trailer and drove it out into the heart of the Pacific Northwest. I've often asked myself, why do people build river tables? What's the draw? It looks like a melted bowling ball in the middle of two pieces of wood. I don't get it. I don't understand. That is until I realize that, well, you could blow them up. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna blow this river table to hell and back with 26 pounds of high explosives. And we're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. Hey, we're here on location in the great Pacific Northwest. We're on a buddy of mine's property, private property. We got permission to be here. As you might be able to tell in the background, a forest fire came through here a couple years ago. Everything is completely burnt, so we can't start a forest fire. Safe place to blow things up. We've got 26 pounds of high explosives strapped to the bottom of this river table. We've got a demolition expert on site who's walking us through all the safety and everything, so we're doing this above board, right? Absolutely. We're either experts or idiots. Either way, don't try this at home. Do not try this at home. But we are ready to send this thing back to the river from whence it came. Full send. Full send.
Well, guys, we did it. We found the one and only good use for a river table. We literally just spent about, what, 45 minutes to an hour combing the area, trying to find every little scrap, and this is all that was left of that thing. It obliterated it. That's what 26 pounds of explosives will do. So if you're going to build a river table, I suggest blowing it up. That's about all they're good for. I want to give a huge shout out to Jonathan Katz Moses for coming up, helping me film this video, getting some sweet slow motion shots. John, you got yeah, anything to say? I mean, if you want to check out some great instructional woodworking content, head over to my channel, Jonathan Katz Moses. Or if you want some great woodworking tools, head over to camtools.com and check out what we got hey, over there. Hey, well, hey, this isn't a promotional video. I'm sorry. I got carried away. Anyways, I can't bring you anywhere. You're so explosive. Let's do it again.